Oh, hey, Joe. Yeah? I figured out the number one skill to be an anime actor. Oh, really? <laughs> You're gonna hurt yourself. Stop. Look, one of the biggest misconceptions in not just the voice actor community, but in the fan community, the consumption community regarding anime, is that all it really takes to be a good anime actor is the ability to scream for a really long time. Look, I understand that anime is intense and sometimes really awkward, sometimes really weird. <laughs> but we can't discount that there is a significant amount of skill that goes into anime dubbing. In fact, I believe that anime dubbing is one of the most technically difficult genres you can work in as a voice actor. And it's a shame that it pays the least out of pretty much any other work you can do. But that's a topic for another video. Hey, my name is Joe Zija. I'm the founder of LearnVoiceActing.com and I'm here to empower the next generation of voice actors by simplifying the industry and making education accessible for them. I have a ton of content out here about voice acting education and I'd love it if you'd hit the like and subscribe button to help support the channel. So, what are the most important skills when it comes to voice acting and anime? Well, I wanna talk about two really important ones before I get to the most important one, which I'll save for last. The first skill that I wanna talk about is self-awareness. That sounds more like a life skill, and it, well, it kinda is, but it can be extremely important when you're talking about anime. Why? Because anime can be extremely stressful on your vocal cords. We kind of alluded it to a little bit in the intro, but yes, anime can be extremely intense with a lot of screaming, battle noises, and a whole host of other things that if I wanna keep my channel rating, I can't talk about here. Regardless of what they are, they're generally things the human voice doesn't do very well on its own. Now, there are some people out there that are uniquely and genetically qualified for this sort of thing, like, like J.B. Blanc or Fred Tatashore. But if that's not you, then you need to be extremely aware of your own limitations. One of the stories I tell most often about my career and mistakes I've made from like a vocal health perspective is for a show called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is known for just being way over the top when it comes to just about everything. Well, I went in for the voice of a main villain, Oingo, in a particularly loud episode, and I made the mistake of choosing a voice for my character that was very rough and textured, something I'm not really used to doing, it's not my forte. By the end of that three hour session, I could barely speak and I didn't work for two days afterwards because I wasn't self-aware enough to understand my limitations. Know yourself, know your voice, and communicate. The second crucial skill for anime dubbing is flexibility. Again, kind of sounds a little more of a life skill than something a voice actor would use. So maybe I should really start a self-help section of the channel so that you could really get all my great life advice. But the, the truth of it is that it applies to anime probably more than any other voice acting discipline. So what do I mean by flexibility? You have to be able to adapt to rapidly changing circumstances in an anime session. Not only do we often deal with plot lines and characters and situations that are really far beyond the bounds of reality, we're also dealing with part of the industry that isn't always as tight knit as things like commercials or corporate presentations. There are many layers to the process that allows an anime to be translated and adapted into English and then put into a format that a voice actor can understand, interpret, and then deliver. We often find that the scripts we get from the adapters, who are the people that take the translation and then adapt it to make sure it fits the context of what's going on on the screen, they're not exactly perfect. I don't think I've ever done an entire anime session in my life where we haven't rewritten the script on the fly to make sure it fits what's going on on the screen. Anime adapters are extremely overworked, often underpaid, and they're having to rush through this really complicated process of not just translating, but interpreting that translation and localizing Japanese into English. This might mean you, as an actor, trying many different versions of a line on the fly without any preparation. Anime dubbing can be an extremely collaborative effort that involves everyone in the room in a way that's unlike any other genre of voice acting in the industry. Being flexible on your toes and making sure you can deal with whatever changes come your way is a great way to stand out as someone that helps this process rather than hurts it. So, that brings me to the top skill needed for any anime voice actor. Are you ready for it? It's... Timing! You get it? You see what I did there? I, I had like a really long... Look, not all my jokes could be winners, okay guys? So what do I mean by timing? And why do I think it's the most important thing in anime voice acting? I'm sure you've noticed at some point, if you're at all a fan of anime, that the character's lips are flapping. 
That's what happens when we talk. It's a totally natural thing. The totally unnatural thing that happens in voice acting is that we're forced to adapt a different language that's already been recorded into English and then adapt that English to the flaps that are already there. We're not, in most cases, going to go back and reanimate the lip flaps to match the English. So, as the English voice actor, we're required to match the mouth movements of the character on the screen. Sometimes this can be as technical as the actual sounds and movements the character is making. So as in, when they're making a closed mouth's noise, we can't have our mouths open and vice versa. Most of the time, however, a director is going to be satisfied if you can merely start when the Japanese actor starts and end when the Japanese actor ends. In order to do that, you need to have a superb sense of timing because what happens is you preview it once, you get three beeps, beep, 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 and then you hear it in Japanese, and then you rewind and you go beep, 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 and you say it in English, and you have to have that timing in your ears. Being a musician can really help in this regard as you understand rhythm and you have this sort of innate sense of like, how long is two seconds without having to count it on a watch, right? The timing or lack of timing of an actor is really one of the things that allows an anime session to move forward at a pace that's desirable for the end client. Since anime isn't paid per episode like network TV animation, clients generally want to get through as many episodes as they can in a short amount of time to keep their budgets down. Have I impressed upon you yet that the anime voice acting budget is not a big number? So the quicker you can catch on to the timing of this stuff that's going on on the screen, the more you can pump out, the better you make your director look, the happier the client is, the more you get asked back into the booth. There's nothing that slows a session down and creates frustration like an actor that doesn't understand their own timing, which forces the director or the engineer to artificially stretch or shorten your work in order to make it fit into the lip flaps that are already there. If you're one of my students, you know that I always talk about making it easy for your clients, right? You reduce friction and you'll be a hero, they'll ask back again and again. In anime, the way you do that is timing. I'm assuming by now that you're astute enough that you've noticed that out of all these skills, I haven't mentioned anything that people think of when it comes to voice acting, particularly acting. We're not talking about making these great wild character voices or about making strong choices in the copy. We're talking about some extremely technical things. And that brings up some general points I really wanna make clear about voice acting and that it's not about the voice. It's not about the voice, it is not about the voice. There is so much more to this career than what you sound like or what character voices you can do. So many people ignore it all the time. It's my job here to lift the veil from your eyes and make sure that you understand that there are many components to this business and many ways to succeed. I hope I've done that for you today. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you'd like some more awesome educational content relating to voice acting, voice acting education, and the incredible stories we tell each other. Thank you guys so much. You go get behind the mic.